Hey guys, so what I'm going to talk about in this video was like when I first started out in business, it wasn't easy getting work at first. But just a little backstory on the video we're watching though is this was a, I'm using a DeWalt's line laser here. This is the first time I've used their line laser or the first time I've ever used a line laser. But they sent me this laser and wanted me to try it on. So I figured I'd try it on this poor. It, it was actually pretty cool. I really liked it. But so getting back to um, when I first started out, and getting work now I was about 19 years old when I decided to go on my own you know I'd been working for a guy for four or five years I gave him my notice and I decided that you know hey I want to do this on my own we was doing a lot of commercial work at the time I didn't really want to go that route I didn't want to go the commercial route I wanted to do more residential and like smaller commercial stuff that's kind of how I decided that I was going to get into this work and then do my own thing. I didn't know if I was gonna have, how many employees I was gonna have. I didn't know where my work was gonna be coming from. Other than, I did have one guy I was friends with and he did concrete foundation walls. So he said that, he, I don't know how many he did a year, 40 or 50 a year. He did say he would give me all his concrete floors. So that, I mean, I did have something, but it wasn't enough, you know, like it wasn't gonna be enough to support me or support a business. That first year, I was, I was based, I, no, I was 19 years old. I was still living at home. I did, I had bought some land. I bought seven acres of land, all with cash. I had saved up enough cash while I was working all throughout high school. Bought seven acres of land with, you know, the hopes and the dreams of building a house there. And still working while I was, you know, my own contractor, while I was my own business, basically it was just me. I wanted to, I wanted to start building my house. Now, in the meantime, a friend of mine who had been also been working for the same commercial contractor I had, he was, he was the same age as me. We were both 19 years old. He decided to give his notice and come to work with me. So we were kind of like partners there for about a year, year and a half, we did the partner thing. And that, that worked out okay. For the time being, it, it was okay. We did not have like work every day. It wasn't busy, busy, busy every day. It was, it, it was actually the, the building industry when we decided to go out on our own was bad. Interest rates were really, really high. Not a lot of people were building new houses. You know, one of the ways that we would get work was basically we'd just jump in our trucks and drive around. Anywhere from, you know, five miles from our houses to 30 or 40 miles from our houses. Just, just drive kind of on back roads and look for houses that were being built. And if we saw one, if we saw a house under construction, we'd drive in the driveway. And if the concrete floors weren't done, we'd just get out and talk to the builder or the homeowner or whoever was there. And whoever was in charge and say, hey, do you know, do you need a price on doing these concrete floors? This is who we are. And a lot of them would say, no, we already got somebody. But there were a few that would say, yeah, sure, we'll take a price. And that's how we got some work. We had the concrete foundation guy that I knew. And then slowly but surely, you know, we'd build up a builder here or there. And then word of mouth got out, you know, from this builder to that builder as we were still driving around looking for work and we started just building up a, a clientele that first year you know only being 19 20 years old we didn't have a ton of expenses like we didn't have a house mortgage we did have trucks uh, i did have a truck payment which i absolutely hated i hated owing anybody money um debt was evil to me at that point i don't know why maybe my parents instilled that in me but i did not like having debt if i wasn't busy pouring concrete you know i felt like i was missing out i felt like i'd never i was never going to get that day back and every day was an opportunity to me an opportunity to make money what i did was i also did other types of work like like i call it like handyman type work when i wasn't pouring concrete i would I would mow lawns, I would, I would cut brush, I would, I would rake leaves, you know, whatever I could do basically to make some cash and pay that truck off, pay that loan off because I didn't want to have that debt. And that actually worked out pretty good. So I would do that stuff like on weekends and, you know, do concrete work during the week as much as I possibly could, you know, go around, look for work. By the second year, you know, things were getting pretty busy. We'd built up quite a few builders. We'd 
added another foundation guy. But that first year was rough, I'm not going to lie, you know. But luckily, being as young as we were, it wasn't a killer because we didn't have a ton of expenses, I guess. I didn't have kids, you know, like I said, didn't have a house. Basically just had a truck payment, food, you know, the basic cost of living. And then we didn't even have, like, we had the basic tools that we needed, you know, the straight edges, the bull floats, come-alongs. All, all the hand tools that we needed. I didn't start out by owning a power trowel. Like when we had, when we had a floor to do for, on our very first jobs, I would just rent one for you know it was 50 bucks for the day to rent a power trowel. But we'd rent a power trowel until we made enough money we could buy our own. And then once we had one, you know we'd make more money, and then we could buy another one. We just didn't go out and borrow money to buy those. It was just at the time it was just cheaper to rent one and you know use that as a, an expense so that's basically how I started out like that it was very very small it was just me and another guy and we would have in the summertime if we could pick up a, a you know a friend maybe that was still in high school or had just graduated and wasn't gone to college in the summer we, we'd pick up a guy to help us in the summer and that's that's how we did a lot of our work that first year or two and then after being partners for a couple of years you know I don't know I, I guess my biggest problem back then was like I was kind of controlly I felt like I was wicked number one I was wicked competitive like I wasn't gonna let failure uh, get the best of me ever no matter what I was into sports in high school you know I was a big sports guy with basketball being my number one sport but I played soccer I played baseball I hated to lose I loved winning and I would I would do whatever I needed to as far as as far as my training as far as practicing to be the best I could be to help my team win so I think that competitiveness definitely transferred over into being in business for myself I wasn't gonna let failure be an option in you know my business my concrete business and I think having that 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 burning desire to be successful and the competitiveness to to not want to lose at this was definitely a factor in me being as successful as I am now for sure and it definitely I think it shortened the amount of time that I had to struggle because I would do, I would work seven days a week, 24 hours a day, whatever I needed to do to be successful. I wasn't going to let anything be an excuse as to, you know, not succeed. And I kept doing that for years, you know, years and years until I got about 30 years old. And then by the age of 30, you know, I was I was doing pretty good. So for 10 years, man, it was like this. I'm going to make this work no matter what. I don't care. So anyway, after after two years of being in partnership, you know, I decided that I, that really wasn't for me. I didn't really like splitting things 50 50. I wanted to be the sole owner and make all the decisions and have all the responsibility myself. I just that's that was just me that was in my DNA so we split up he went his way I went my way it ended up turning out being the best for both of us in the long run although at the time it didn't really seem like it but looking back on it now it definitely was the best for both of us after going out on uh, you know just being on my own hiring hiring the right guys was definitely tricky but I started out hiring like people I knew um, people I'd gone to school with people that were local and some of them some of them may have worked in concrete a little bit for other people and some of them maybe didn't and I had to train on my own which you know in a lot of these videos Darren and Luke Darren's over there on the right with the grade stick and Luke is the one bent over in the brown shirt you know the, those were all trained by me Eric in the back in the red he would he was he started working for me and, and was trained by me it ended up working out really good anyway in the long run it just didn't seem like it at first I, I could tell you this you know like the one of the reasons I wanted to be in business for myself was I just I just wanted to make my own decisions on what to do I wasn't real keen on other people telling me what to do where to be how much I was going to make per hour. I wanted to have all those decisions myself. I wanted to have control over what I was doing that day, how much money I was making that day, if I wanted to work that day or not, 
all that kind of stuff. I wanted those decisions. For some reason, I just did. I don't know where that came from. That's just what I wanted. Another decision that I wanted was like, I guess I just wanted the freedom to be able to do what I wanted when I wanted. Now, obviously that meant having enough money to be able to make those decisions. So money was a big, big part of it. When I was really young, you know, obviously being a millionaire was was exciting. It was like the dream. I want to be a millionaire. I want to be a millionaire. A millionaire is going to be the answer to all my all my dreams. Well, I guess it really wasn't the money that was the answer to the dreams. It was the freedom to be able to make decisions on what you want to be able to do and when you want to be able to do it was really what I was chasing. That is That is what drove me the most, I think, is Number one, if I want to do something with my wife or my kids now, I can do it. I can just say, hey, you know, this is what I'm doing. I don't care. I don't have to answer to anybody. I don't have to ask anybody. This is what I want to do. If I want to, if I don't want to work for a certain person now, because after my business is built up, I have enough money in the bank. Uh, I don't, I don't need that person's job. If that person is a jerk or, you know, an a-hole or, or whatever. I can make the decision, hey, I don't need your work. I got I got enough other work. I got enough other money. I don't need to work for you. Though, I mean, those are the kinds of decisions I wanted to be able to make at a very young age. I didn't want other people to have control over me, even though I was in business for myself. I didn't, I didn't like that. I didn't like people having control over what I can do, when I can do it, and how much I was going to get paid. So, I mean... Up to a certain point, there's a little bit of that going on, I guess, but depending on how much time and effort and how much desire you have to be successful, you can shorten that amount of period based on basically your actions. And I guess it comes down to, when it comes down to money, you know, it can't just be about making the money. It's what you do with the money afterwards, how good you are handling money, not going into debt as much as possible you know some guys i know to buy stuff and equipment you got to go into a little bit of debt sometimes in order to make more money but for me personally i just i I, like i've never i've never gone into debt to buy something whether it's a piece of equipment a truck other than that very first one i bought after that i just I've, i've paid for everything i've never owed the bank uh i didn't want the bank to have control over me i just felt like oh having payments was like, I don't know, it was just a bad feeling to me and I didn't like that feeling. So I didn't go that route, not to say you can't be successful if you do. I just personally didn't like the feeling of owing anybody anything. I didn't like be, I didn't like having to pay the bank more money just because they were using my money. Like in other words, the very first time I went to the bank to ask for money for my truck, I was, you know, obviously I was young. I was being told, oh, you got to you gotta build your credit. You got to build your credit. You got to take out a loan. You got to get a credit card, you know, and pay them off and build your credit and all that crap. I didn't believe. I didn't believe in. So I, but anyway, because I was so young and naive at 19, you know, I did that on my first truck. And when you look at your payment and you're paying the bank so much interest, back then interest rates were high, man. They were like, they were, they were in the double digits. Let's just say that. So all the money I saw just going to interest in that payment and what little bit amount was going towards the truck, I was like, this is crazy, I'm not doing this. So that was one of the reasons I got into, you know, doing other things, you know, mowing lawns and stuff at first when I didn't have enough concrete work. I was like, you know what, I'm paying this thing off. I'm not waiting the, back then loans were mostly were for like three years, sometimes four years. I'm not waiting that long to get this thing paid off. But anyway, just just to talk a little bit about the struggles of being young, going into business for yourself, some of the things I went through, some of the thoughts that were going through my head. I know some of you other guys, maybe you're either you're working for somebody, maybe you're thinking of going into business for yourself, or maybe you just have, maybe you have the same thoughts. You know, if you got any questions about it, leave them down in the comments. These are these are some of the things I help others with to go through in the Concrete Underground, my private membership where I help people. I can help people one on one in that. That's the link for that is down in the description. But mostly, I just wanted to share with you a little bit of my thoughts about when I was young, when I was first starting out. I don't know. Just let me know what you guys think about that. Now, here, what we're doing is. This was a this was a big huge addition. We didn't do the floors in the big addition, the warehouse stuff. This is the stuff I used to do that I don't like doing anymore. I'm working for 
one of our regular contractors here. Now what they're doing, this is part of the old section of the building that butts up to the new section. And they want to move their, they want to move their men's and their women's bathrooms. This building's huge. It's a big business. They want to move their men's and women's bathrooms into this section. So they cut out this section of the floor. They redid all the plumbing. And that's what all the pipes are for, basically bathrooms and sinks. And then they had us come back in and just re-pour this floor. What they're going to do for the finish in the new section over there, which you can kind of see in behind us, those new floors are all going to be polished. And they're going to polish this one as well for the finish. So they needed something that was really flat. Um, it's going to be finished really smooth. My guys are actually going to, Darren and Luke will stay here. Actually, Eric's going to stay here too on this one. And they'll hand, they'll hand trial this really, really smooth. So when the guys come in with their polishing machines, you know, it's not going to take a lot of effort to really get this polished to where they need it. But, and as you can see, we had to use power buggies with this. The entrance was probably 100 feet away. So we just rented a couple power buggies. I don't own those either. We just rent them when we need them. There might be five jobs, 10 jobs a year tops that we need a power buggy. So we'll just rent them. These ones were propane ones. They were pretty nice. And that's how we got the floor done here today. So let, let me know your thoughts on what we talked about today, guys. Again, thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe to the channel. And we'll, we'll see you on the next one.